Suppose if you have a requirement in your project wherein you have to call Fusion REST APIs with the help of user assertion that is you have to invoke any API on behalf of a user that is on particular username then how to achieve the same with the help of IDCS JWT based user assertion method that we are going to see in our classes in this section. I am here in the official documentation page by Oracle on using REST adapter with Oracle integration 3. So here Oracle has documented in detail about what we need to do in order to invoke a API with the help of JWT assertion using IDCS. So you can use this method in order to call any APIs need not be IDCS any identity provider you can use. So there is a generic method explained in this document. In order to know the background about JWT user assertion you can have a look on this. Now I will directly go to the main thing that is prerequisites for JWT based user assertion. First and the foremost thing is you have to create the IDCS trusted application. Oracle has provided in detail detail over here how we can create the trusted application. But the main focus they have considered is Oracle integration APIs. This we had already covered in our earlier classes how to invoke any Oracle integration API using user assertion. Now before I go ahead and explain how we can do the same to invoke the Fusion REST APIs, I will give you a background what this means exactly. Here is an example to create the cache banks with the help of this API in Oracle Fusion. Now if you look at the authorization, usually in the project what happens is you will be using some generic username like it could be a HCM integration user, SCM integration user and so on and so forth things. But suppose if there is a scenario in your project wherein you have to create the bank account on behalf of a user. Suppose if you are building a user interface with the help of Visual Builder and suppose I am logging into that Visual Builder extension and my email ID is abc at the rate gmail.com. When I make a call to Fusion API, then I have to call this APIs with the help of my username only instead of some generic name or generic username stored in Visual Builder service connections or in integration connections. Now how we can achieve the same is with the help of IDCS based JWT user assertion access tokens. Now in simple words, it means a bearer token. So we have to generate this kind of bearer token from IDCS on behalf of a user. Now that access token we are generating on behalf of a user like abc at the rate gmail.com which will be available for a particular duration that access token will expire after that. I hope you know already all those things. Now when we generate an access token on behalf of a user and use this bearer authentication or authorization method and pass the access token then that API will be called on behalf of a user. Now first and the foremost thing in order to achieve the use case is we have to create the trusted application. I have created a simple document in order to demonstrate how we can create a trusted application that is for generating the JWT user assertion access tokens for a Fusion API. So this document highlights about Oracle integration. Now first and the foremost thing is you have to log in into your admin console for IDCS. Suppose if you are using IEM then the step will be same just the user interface will change. In case of IAM, you have to log into your Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Tenancy and then to the IAM. You have to create a trusted application. In other words, just an application, confidential application, provide some meaningful name and the icon if you want, you can upload. Then coming to the client configuration over here, you have to select client credentials. Then you have to select JWT assertion that is under registering a client. Then you have to select that is on behalf of. Next, under the scope, you have to add the scope that is you have to refer to the same application that is whatever name you have provided for this application underscore user assertion same application you have to refer and select the URL which you provide but when you are creating this application for the first time this application is not activated yet so you won't see this URL or the application in the list so you can skip this scope adding as of now when you create this application for the first time in IDCS the same thing I have put over here under the note then you have to go to the resources that is register a resource here you have to provide the url that is you have to provide your fusion url colon 443.com colon 443 that is over here and you have to check mark is refresh token allowed then you have to tell for how many seconds your access token will be active after that it will get expired then coming to the scope you can allow a scope for slash that is all and you can select this requires consent true then you can skip all other things like authentication, authorization, consent information. You can just click on save and activate your application. Once you activate your application, again you have to come back to this application. Go to the scope over here that is under the client configuration. Now since you have activated your application, your application will be visible over here. You have to select the 
application which you are referring over here that is the url with the help of which you can identify select that and again you have to save the changes once you have selected the scope so this is how you have to create your idcs trusted application and one more thing i just forgot to tell you about this certificate in order to generate the certificate you can go through this documentation that is you have to generate the self signed key pair it will generate you the dot jks file then you have to export this public key that is for signing the jwt assertion it will generate a one more file for you that is the cer file this cer file you have to import it over here and also under the partner settings if you go to the settings over here under the partner settings you have to upload the same file already we had gone through this step when we had learned how to use jwt user assertion in order to invoke oic rest apis so the same video you can have a look again for generating these keys and how to configure or upload the cer file under the partner setting then we have to convert this cer file to the p12 because we have to get this pem file so this is the file which we will be using with our oracle integration library as well as oci function going ahead and we are generating the access token with the help of idcs so you have to follow all those things that is you have to create a trusted application in idcs upload the certificate file and also keep this pm file handy that is generate this and keep safely in some repository so if you further scroll down oracle has provided in detail step about how to create the confidential application that is how you have to navigate to your idcs instance create the application that is confidential application then you have to provide some meaningful name then you have to select the grant types that is jwt assertion client credential what i have shown in my document then trust and apply then upload the cer file on behalf of specific then select the fusion url that we had shown in the document then you have to just activate your application at the end you have to upload the cer file the same file which you upload over here that is in step 2 that is over here under the trusted client same file you have to upload under the settings in idcs partner settings and click on import so next oracle is saying how to generate the jwt token in order to get the access token from idcs this we will learn in our next class there are a couple of methods how to generate the save In our earlier class, we had seen how to create the IDCS confidential application, generate the certificate file, that is CR file, upload over here, configure the client, configure the resource and activate the application. Next, if you just scroll down over here, Oracle is saying how to generate the JWT token. Then subsequently, how we can request the IDCS API in order to generate the access token on behalf of a user. Now, in order to generate a token, Oracle is saying we should be passing the header in this format and the body in this format and then we can make use of any of the JWT libraries in any of the programming languages and we can generate the token and the same we can send to IDCS and get the access token on behalf of a user. Oracle has provided an example with the help of Java code but since Oracle integration supports the libraries only written in the JavaScript we will concentrate on writing the same thing in JavaScript function. I have created the library over here and imported now if I show you this library, it is making use of the JavaScript library that is JS R assign latest all. So this is the library which I have used and I am making use of one more custom ja JavaScript file wherein I am sending few of the parameters which is needed in order to generate the token that is key ID, IAS, sub, so and so forth things and the meaning I have provided over here. Basically, I'm passing this sub that is the username on behalf of whom I'm generating the token. JTI is a unique identifier. You can just put this same as is. Then there is a IAT expiry IS. This is the client ID of the trusted application which you created over here. Next, coming to the AUD, this is the identity provider. Since we are making use of IDCS, we can provide identity as identity.oracle.com and then the KID. That is nothing but the alias. So KID, you have to make sure whatever allies you have provided over here while uploading the certificate in the trusted application or in the partner setting, you have to provide the same name over here. Else your validation will fail in the subsequent step. And then the key with the help of which we will be signing this will be the PEM file which we generated over here in the earlier step that is in the step number 4 in this document. Now in order to generate this library, I have made use of the JavaScript function. I will show that over here. First and the foremost thing is those value what you see over here KID, IAS, sub, AUD, JTA these things I will be passing as an input parameters for this function from my integration. So integration is making use of JavaScript action in order to call this library. 
then I will be calling this JSR assign. This is the Node.js library which I'm using. And the key, if you see, this is a PEM file which I showed you just now. That data we have to store over here. Otherwise, you can send at the runtime or you can place in the lookup as well. I have stored in the lookup this value. I will show you where I have stored this value. Next, we have to construct the header and the body in the exact same manner what Oracle has documented over here else your JWT token will fail while we get that access token from the IDCS. The IDCS will directly reject the format. So the format should exactly match in this manner only and sequence also you should follow accordingly. Then we can just make use of the function that is this one sign within this library where you can pass the header payload that is the body and the rs256 this is the algorithm name and the key value that is the key is nothing but this value what we store over here pm file data once we run this in the response if you see over here i am passing one sjwt token so this will respond us with the jwt token if you see over here this is the token value what i will get using the same token value what we have to do is we have to make a call to this idcs api next that is odd to v1 token this is the url relative URI we have to invoke from the idcs then the token what we generate from this library that we have to pass as a url encoded over here in the assertion we have to pass the user assertion token over here and the scope obviously we have to pass the scope in our case it will be a fusion url what we had configured in our trusted application over here the same thing we have to pass so all those things i have stored in the lookup i will show you subsequent classes how i have called this javascript function In our previous class, we had seen how to create this Oracle integration library which will generate the JWT assertion token which we will be using in order to get the access token on behalf of a user from IDCS. So this is the URL which we will make use and we will pass the JWT token which we generated over here and we will get the access token. Using the access token, we will call this Fusion API if you see over here. Instead of basic authentication, we have to go for bearer and paste the access token which we got from IDCS and invoke the Fusion API on behalf of any user. Now we will see how to do the same with the help of integration. I have created this integration in which we have to pass the username. Like here we can pass the username on behalf of whom we want to get the token value. Like this user should be present in IDCS as well as in the Fusion else it will fail. So let me consider some generic username which we will follow in all our projects like SCM integration user. Click on run. Now what this integration will do is it will make a call to our library that is the integration library it will get the JWT assertion token as mentioned by Oracle over here. Once we get the JWT assertion token with the help of integration library we have to next make a call to this API that is auth to v1 token and in the response we will get the access token using which we will be able to invoke any fusion API. So in the response we will get the access token in this response and in the steps over here if you can see it is making a call to our javascript function then it is making a call to idcs to get the token and in the response you will get this token that which will expire in so and so seconds and it is of type bearer so same thing what we had used over here now i will show you how i have done this integration i have exposed this integration over a rest protocol and the first step over here is the javascript so we have to make use of the javascript action over here and pass all the values in our previous class, I had shown you I am passing KID, IAS, um, so and so forth things as an input parameter and all the values are stored in the lookup, including the key. So key, you have to make sure the key referring to the PEM file that we generate over here in the step number four. So once we pass all the data from the lookup, next we have to call to this IDCS API that is odd to v1 token and you can configure the request and the response as it is mentioned in the documentation for this. API. You can refer the IDCS docs for this. Now, if you go to the view over here, the mapping for the IDCS, let me switch over to the code view. Here, grant type will be the constant. You can refer to this documentation, the same grant type what they have used over here for demonstration. I have passed the same thing. Next, coming to the assertion, we have to pass the token what we get as a response from our library output. Then the scope, this is a fusion URL we have to pass over here, which I have stored in the lookup. And in the response from this IDCS, we will get the access token as we had seen while testing this integration. Now, once we get this access token, how we can make use of the actual use case wherein we are calling the Fusion APIs that I will show next. Here is the sample integration using which we can make a call to our integration that is the earlier integration which I had shown you. In the response, we will get the access token. 
So once we get the access token from our integration, we have to make a call to our fusion. So this fusion invocation configuration will be same. Here I am just making a call to one of the APIs in the fusion. Now if you look at the header parameters or the header request headers, you have to check mark this standard. So this you have to follow if you are making use of JWT user assertion. You have to add this authorization header. Next you have to configure the connection as it is needed for any fusion API. Just make sure you are adding the authorization request header. And in the mapping over here, expand this HTTP header. So whatever access token we get from the earlier integration response, we have to pass over here in the authorization header. The format is we have to use concatenation bearer space, then we have to pass the access token. Similarly, how we are passing in the postman. Suppose if you look at the code over here, it is also following the same pattern that is bearer space and then the access token. So similarly, we have to construct it over here and then if, if it is a post, you can pass the payload and if it is a get, you can call as is by passing the query parameter. So like this, we can call any fusion APIs with the help of Oracle integration using the JWT user assertion that is by getting the access token on behalf of any user and calling the APIs on behalf of any user. Here is the lookup value. You can see over here, we have to provide the alias, same alias name what we use over here in the trust application when we import over here in the CER as well as in the partner settings. Same thing, we have to provide it over here. Client ID of our trusted application, then the PM file content. We have to provide, this will be a constant. Identity provider will be same for IDCS and then you have to provide the scope. So this scope value should match with the scope value which we added over here under the client configuration while creating the trusted application. Here is the REST connection for invoking the Fusion APIs. Here you have to provide the URL and then you have to select the security as no security policy because we are sending the authorization in the mapper that is at the runtime. Here is the quick look on the REST connection used to invoke the IDCS. You have to provide the base URL or the connection URL. Then you have to go for the basic security or the authentication. Provide the client ID and client secret as the password for your trusted application which you created in IDCS. So like this you have to create the connection in Oracle integration. So with this setup, we will be able to get the access token on behalf of a user and invoke any Fusion API.